Um, Sid, uh, Siddharth, can you please change the, the slide for everybody? So let's get the session started. I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Gaurav Vora, who is Head of Financial Advisory Services, CFO, KPMG in India. Uh, Mr. Vora has 20 years of experience in the field and he will complete 25 years in the profession ne uh, next year. He's an undergraduate, uh, he has an undergraduate degree from SRCC, which is a new De uh, Delhi University, and he's a chartered accountant. He handles IFRS, US, GAAB, and regulatory reporting. He also provides equity and debt listing assistance and leads learning solutions, which is an area of passion for him. So Mr. Vora, I would love to just hand over the session to you now. Sure, thanks Sonia. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. All right, excellent. First of all, my sincerest apologies for the delay. Uh, there was a technical uh, glitch had on our end and I think it's expected with any big four, especially auditing side. I think certain firewalls were built in which I couldn't at least get around and had to get in my IT. I'm genuinely very sorry for this. No thank problem. you for this. Uh, no, thank you for this opportunity to interact. Uh, how, how many people do we have on now? Uh, uh, just over 30, sir. It's, um, yeah, just over 30. All right. And, and, and largely, uh, 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 how, how many of them would have had accounting as a background as, uh, as I start off, I mean, just wanted to get a sense. I wanted this to be a freewheeling conversation basis. Whatever I discussed with Navni, I hope that's okay with you guys. And so how many of them would have, let's say, accounting as a background or science as a background? Just a quick thing, and then I'll quickly start sure. out with an introduction for myself and move on. Yeah. Sure. Uh, students, you can either put that in the chat or you can unmute and, uh, and uh, give your answer to the sir, please. With whatever you prefer. Um, I did accounts in ninth and tenth of that counts. Sure, sure. Okay. I mean, as a ballpark, would we have this as a statistic available or we'll have to get it from everybody? Okay, accounting, accounting, okay. There are a few. Uh, Pavit uh, has done. Uh, Pratham has. Um, Ishwarya has a, a, good, a, ba a good background uh, in accounting. Mahi also, I think she just said she has two years. So I would say, sure, possibly five, sir. Possibly. So mixed batch. Yeah, mixed batch. No, no worries at all. So uh, sure, no, that's helpful. Thank you. Uh, so very quickly, as a quick background, um, my name is Gaurav Vora. I'm a partner with uh, KPMG. Started my uh, career back in '97 with Coopers and Librand before. Coopers and Library merged with PW to make PWC. Um, as ma'am mentioned, I come with um, uh, honors in economics actually. And that's one of the reasons why I was asking because the area we're going to touch upon today is uh, avenues uh, available in auditing and accounting. And uh, just wanted to give you a brief background in the sense that I did science in my plus two and I did economics as my undergrad degree at the Delhi University with Shiram. And after that, I changed my course to move on to accounting. So there's a chartered accountancy degree which is available in the country. And that's something which I uh, uh, pursued working with Coopers and Librarian. So um, it's, 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 a, it's been a mixed bag. And so if there are students who've, who've had a non-accounting background, I just wanted to give you some comfort that you could move to accounting and auditing as a profession. And I'll delve into that uh, in a minute from now. And, and I must share that uh, as I moved to uh, auditing and accounting as a career post my graduation, um, in, in my batch of uh, the best candidates at uh, PwC, uh, I did ACE accounting as a subject all through. And so spent about 15 years with PwC, uh, went on to work in the industry. I was the um, uh, head of finance for General Motors, the Chevrolet brand of cars in the country, managing their three plants and the R&D center. Uh, played that role and was acting CFO for about two years, parts of two years, uh, two and a half years, which I spent there. And then I came on board KPMG about uh, seven years back. This is, yeah, just started on my eighth year and uh, have, have 
uh, spent, like I said, close 25 years, uh, mostly in NCR region. Obviously, I travel uh, both nationally as well as internationally for work. But largely, NCR has been my uh, core area of uh, uh, work. Uh, the clients which I tend to lead for the firm from a relationship perspective across sectors would include the likes of Airtel, Aircel, Ericsson, Nokia, Microsoft, General Motors, MG Motors, which is the Hector brand now, Royal Enfield, um, and and many others. On the on the government side, I deal with uh, ONGC, IOC, Petronet, Gale, uh, all the Navratnas, Steel Authority of India, and, and work with them. That's a bit of a background uh, in terms of where I started and what I did have largely remained in profession except for a brief stint when I'd gone out and worked in industry. And uh, so the session today, uh, I, I was given this opportunity, very, very happy to be here, very happy to actually know that, uh, you know, I, I saw the history and I think you guys started off in 2006. When I was there back in my time, Delhi University obviously was uh, the only choice and then you had to go out and do uh, 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 further studies if you wanted to sort of face it. I mean, till date, I, I harbored this aspiration to probably go back to economics. That's very, very close to me and uh, remains uh, an area of passion. One of the other reasons I have continued with uh, the big fours as they are known. Uh, so there's Ernst & Young, there's PricewaterhouseCoopers, there's KPMG and there's Deloitte. I'm sure most of you know that. So there are these big four accounting consulting firms which delve in the area of accounting, auditing, taxation, and then advisory. So all the due diligence work, et cetera, which happens right now when a geo is going around selling stakes uh, to Saudi Aramco or to Facebook or to others, uh, our teams across these four big fours, which I named for you, are working very, very actively on those deals. And I'll sort of try and cover that aspect also in a minute from now. So uh, the, the intent of the session today would basically be to uh, cover some of the requisite skills and qualifications which are required. What from a behavioral or attitude perspective or personality type could also be uh, an added advantage if one was to embark on a journey on a course like this. What could be some of the pros and cons of uh, you know a career in accounting and auditing. I will also try and share uh, what a typical day in the life of an accountant is or auditor is, but that depends upon where you are in that hierarchy. And then um, we will, time permitting, uh, touch upon some of the latest trends, what's happening, uh, you know, both in industry, academia, and uh, um, uh, on the government side, on the policy making side. And thankfully, touch wood, uh, I, I, I am attached with all those three. I mean, frankly, I'm attached with over 10 universities as I speak to you. And my courses have been embedded in those colleges because about a decade back, industry started realizing that we were getting students who were coming from universities but weren't ready to take on uh, professional jobs uh, or roles, or it was it required another round of training, etc., blah, blah blah, before they could take the hit, they, they could hit the deck running. And that's where we embedded some of our courses on international accounting and. Uh, taxation and MA related stuff, forensic accounting, auditing, etc., in some of these uh, 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 marquee universities. And then uh, at times we end up recruiting some of these people from those courses. So, very, very passionate about training and learning the other area. Uh, train about more than 5,000 people annually on uh, international financial reporting standards. That's the global accounting language. I mean, uh, if you guys are taking notes, I mean, uh, I would encourage you to just make a note of some of these. Uh, uh, that's that's one common language. I mean, um, uh, just to digress a bit, if if you have, uh, if I tell you I have traveled one kilometer in the US uh, and if I have traveled one kilometer in India or UK or Japan or China or Pakistan, anywhere, that one kilometer everybody knows is thousand meters, right? And there's a clear definition of what thousand meter means. What's that distance? Obviously, there is a uh, uh, standard meter which is kept one, in one of the uh, museums in the UK somewhere which is the standard gauge for sure but we all know that but when an Indian company goes out and says I have made a profit of 100 crores this year or let me use billions as a so if an Indian company says I've made a profit of a billion dollars this year let's say TCS or uh, let's say Maruti for that example 
and a Toyota says, I have made a profit of a billion dollars this year, many a times it is felt that how they define that billion dollar and how they got to their billion dollar is not exactly the same. So if Toyota, some of you from accounting background probably would be able to relate with this example a little better and my other friends, I would request you to just bear with me. But when Toyota ships out a vehicle to its dealer and when the dealer makes the actual sale to somebody like you and me, at that point of time, they recognize their revenue. Okay, and then they recognize what is the cost they incurred to recognize that revenue. But come to Maruti, the moment the vehicle is shipped out of their plant, they would recognize revenue and the cost. All right, with the result that you would probably have a much higher sales number in an Indian company and thus a higher profit number with a uh, Japanese company, which is a little more conservative and follows Japanese gap. All right. Uh, whereas the Indian company follows Indian Gap, where they say, okay, if you've transferred the risk and the moment the vehicle is out, you can recognize when they go and recognize then. And then you've got UK Gap, Italian Gap, French Gap, Dutch Gap, Sri Lankan Gap, 156 gaps. Gap is basically generally accepted accounting principles, which means how does one transaction get recorded? If you bought a fixed asset, if you bought a printer, can you capitalize it or does it go to your PL? Is it a cost or is it a fixed asset? So you need to have. So you need to have, I'll answer some of the questions. I would request Navni to keep parking them. Uh, sorry, yeah, I'm not able to um, simultaneously look at the chat and so uh, it'll break the flow, but just bear with me, I'll answer all the questions, yeah? So, so, yeah. So, so whether that printer that you bought is a fixed asset and hence goes to the balance sheet or is it a cost item and you take it to P&L could differ from country to country. Thus, if let's say you are a global fund manager, you're Blackstone, you are an investment manager sitting at BlackRock, okay? You've got $2 billion to invest in automotive stocks across the globe. You don't care where the company is as long as you get the buck for the bank, yeah? Bank for the <laughs> buck, sorry. And, and all the moolah that you're investing, you have to go back and justify to your um, investors that you're bringing them a certain IRR or a return on the amount they've parked with you. So how, how do you deal a with a situation like that? How does uh, investment manager make a decision whether to invest his part of his two billion dollars in a Toyota or a Maruti or a BMW or a General Motor or a Ford or now increasing Tesla, increasingly in Tesla, which has even gone beyond Toyota uh, in market capitalization, right? Unless he's able to decipher and compare the results of all of these companies in a common standard language, that if one says I have made this much profit and this much cash he's able to compare apples with apples this is a problem which was which the uh, sector which the profession was grappling for the longest time and then in the year 2000 all the countries across the globe got together i'm just jumping few years and uh, generalizing a few things but the idea is to get the principle across to you so in the year 2000 all of the countries got together and they said we will issue something known as international financial reporting standards okay these will be the standards which will be followed by almost all the companies and countries across the globe so that investors can make intelligent investment decisions so while that's easier said than done because you know the economic realities of an india is very different from the economic realities of a uk or a us and then all of these countries have their own geopolitical ambitions and some of them may not tend to agree so even today in the US, all the local companies in the US, for example, General Motor, which is a local company in the US registered there, actually cannot file its financial statements in IFRS with NYSE. Uh, it will have to file its financial statements in US GAAP only, which is the United States generally accepted accounting principles. So, so there are certain uh, areas where uh, differences still remain, but largely, over 100 plus countries, in fact, almost 150 countries today follow something known as international financial reporting standard in different forms and manner. And thus, uh, accounting today is becoming a lot more globally accepted profession. I heard uh, in some of my discussions leading up to this session that uh, ACCA is also something you guys want to talk about. So I'm parking that and I'll touch upon that uh, in a minute from now. But uh, 
frankly, um, what happened since 2000, so when I, I had a science background, I shared with you, and I had economics as my undergrad uh, specialization. So when I moved on to doing accounting, auditing, and joined PwC, some of my questions to my friends always who came from accounting background were exactly this. I said, if balance sheet has to tally at all points of time, then the world balance sheet should always be tallied. But it could never be tallied because people were following different gap. But today we are much closer to the reality that today if Tata Motors says I have to take a billion dollar from Toyota, Toyota better reflect that one billion payable to Tata and you know it should square off if I was to make a world balance sheet. And genuinely we are moving much closer to that reality today. So uh, in terms of, um, so what, what the other thing which happened was since 2000, this is something which started happening. And you, if you guys, if you're familiar with the KPOs, the BPOs, and the back offices and the global captives that we have in the country, India actually has become the uh, global capital for accounting uh, and reporting uh, hub, in a manner to say. So you have the GenPax, you have the uh, TCS, you've got Infosys, Accenture, the largest Accenture footprint outside of. I think US would be in India. Okay, in fact, it will be the biggest in India. In fact, even in KPMG, in terms of headcount, uh, India is the number two. Sir, are, are you uh, are you there? I think uh, he is having some technical difficulties. Everybody, just bear with me while I find out what's happening. I'm so sorry about this. Hi, I'm audible. Yes, absolutely. Yes, sir, you're back. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether I only dropped or the, the others also dropped, but I got a message saying that Doom was doing some um, background uh, endpoint protection check or something like that. So apologies for this break again. So where was I? Yeah. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Sorry, where was I? Um, Talking about uh, the generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, and then you were talking about Accenture and KPMG having the highest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So India, yeah, yeah. So India actually became a global hub for accounting talent and uh, knowledge. And uh, like I said, even KPMG has the highest footprint of employees um, uh, in the KPMG world uh, globally. And with the address, like so I was talking about the stock exchanges. So today I, I was giving that analogy that stock exchanges work 24/7. The markets are 24/7, 365 days, and believe you me. That's a fact. And with international financial reporting standards as a common uh, platform, results are really comparable. So even during pandemic times, the stock exchanges are, you know, the only entity which probably never closed, right? Except for a, a, a historical uh, one day momentary blip at, I think, NASDAQ and NYSE. Other than that, no stock exchanges closed and all the investors are making their decisions. Uh, on a real-time basis, even in these pandemic times. So you've seen markets drop by 35%. You've seen markets come up by almost uh, 35 to 50%, but obviously not the highs they were at before. But everybody's taking a bet on what's going to happen. So this whole thing about accounting and auditing is that we are one of the most important wheels in this whole investment um, and, and capital formation uh, journey. So any investor would want, so I was giving you the geo example. Any investor would not pick up a stake in geo till he gets a comfort from an independent third party, which could be a KPMG and a UI or a PWC, but at least one of these four. Okay. And typically they pick up two to say that, okay, whatever geo and reliance are saying, please double check the numbers for me. Okay. Once we as independent uh, experts and professionals confirm that the numbers look fine, 
is when any investor would go ahead and make a investment. So this is the private investment which is coming in. Similarly, for all the listed entities in India, you have an auditor for every financial statement. So the financial statements are to be prepared by the management. If tomorrow one of you goes on to be an entrepreneur and starts his own business. So I work with OYO. Okay, so Ritesh, um, he started his business uh, and he said, I am getting so much top line and this is my cost and this is my uh, bottom line and I need funds. But SoftBank did not sign up to that account till he got an independent confirmation from the likes of us. I won't go into who amongst these big fours, but yeah, I work very, very closely with a lot of these people. Uh, he didn't sign up till the time we verified those numbers uh, for him. So, so no investor gets a comfort purely on the management telling him we are good. They need an independent third party to come in. This is where accountants and auditors come in and play a very, very important role. And thus, as a profession, this has really developed in the last 75, 80 odd years and attained great heights as we speak to you. At the same time, right now, it is probably also uh, uh, going through one of its lowest phases in terms of credibility. If some of you are aware of the Anderson scam, which happened around the time 2000, year 2000. Uh, and that was also one of the reasons why IFRS came about very, very quickly. Or if you've heard of something known as Sabans Oxley, Sox, uh, those are controls which management are supposed to write and the CFO and CEO are supposed to sign that I have followed all these controls that's how my financial statements are prepared. And then the auditor is supposed to certify that, yes, the company has followed all the controls, all the assets they are saying are theirs, are theirs, all the expenses they've charged to PNL are actually to be charged off to PNL. All the uh, investments that they have made are actually investments and all the cash that they are holding is actually their cash. So I can go on on the balance sheet. There's so many components, but every number on the balance sheet in PNL is to be certified by the CFO and the CEO of that company and the company secretary. And then the auditor independently comes in and puts a um, puts his stamp on it. And then it becomes relevant and it becomes acceptable in the market. So even in the stock market today, I mean, by one statistic, KPMG is today, I mean, I must share this statistic. We are probably doing 50% of the Sensex and 40% of the Nifty. Uh, as auditors. So KPMG is just about 25 years in the country. We just completed 25 years a few, um, I think last year or the year before, but has gone on in that 25 years to become the number one auditing company uh, in the country. Uh, and, and, and I say that with a lot of pride. And at the same time, as this was happening, like I said, so, so in India today, uh, the, the number of chartered accountants we have and the number of accounting professionals that we have and the number of auditing professionals that we have and the kind of command they respect globally is immense. There are tons and tons of work which gets uh, outsourced to India. And at one point of time, I mean, people started saying that we are like an accounting engine and we're just like factories, accounting factories and stuff like that. But increasingly, all the stalwarts in the uh, outsourcing space and even the big fours have been able to demonstrate that we are doing probably some of the uh, highest level of complexity work sitting out of India. And frankly, I say this with a lot of pride that sitting out of India, I probably train people across the globe on U US general accepted accounting principles or international financial reporting standards. And that's where I was giving you that statistic. We train more than 5,000 people every year on uh, one or the other course uh, and certify them as, uh, you know, having done those courses. So, so I, I say this with a lot of pride that uh, industry came together. The uh, big force came together as professionals and as uh, auditors and accountants. The academia came together because the universities, the universities, uh, rec recognize that there had to be an industry academia uh, joint effort to ensure that we have the most relevant courses taught in the best possible uh, mode of instruction with real life examples. And then we have people who either if they want to go for higher studies, go, go out and then, you know, uh, are a matter of pride for India once again, as they sound a lot more intelligent and knowledgeable around 
uh, all the aspects of the studies that they do in the universities in India, or if they hit the job market, they are job ready and are hitting the deck running. So, so academia came around, industry came around, the professionals came around, and the latest uh, entrant in this whole thing is the policy makers. Okay, so today the government has got this NSDC, National Skill Development Council. And a large chapter in that NSTC is actually dedicated to uh, accounting and finance. In fact, uh, last weekend I attended a, 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 a interministerial government meeting along with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and the NSTC representative. And the idea was to come up with some global standards in accounting and finance, which has become India's forte and brings in a lot of foreign exchange for the country. So now the uh, government in a way is saying that make in India may be on the back foot, but services has really come forward. And why don't we play on our strengths and then come out with something which could, could be truly Indian, but made for the world. So those are some of the initiatives where we are now working very, very closely with the government. Uh, in fact, the government is going to launch a lot of certification programs under their skill development uh, side. Yeah? So that is a bit of a, um, what should I say, how do I paint the ecosystem for you? But yes, every company out there who's listed or unlisted, because even for filing for a private company uh, or a startup who wants to file their income tax return, needs a certification from an auditor saying that these are fine and the numbers are good. And that's when the government or the tax authorities sort of uh, depend on those numbers. So the very, very respected profession, very, very relevant and required profession. Okay. And uh, requisite skill sets typically for this would be, uh, and, and I'll combine the uh, behavioral aspects also and I think one of the reasons why uh, at the cost of founding a little immodest um, one has tasted a little bit of success is one be good with numbers um, have a have a analytical bent of mind have a questioning bent of mind uh, carry some amount of skepticism the tagline in this profession is trust but still verify so uh, even like I said I was a science uh, plus two I was a economics graduate but probably turned out to be amongst the best i used to interact with the cfos and not be afraid of it because i had all the numbers i had all the work papers i mean they rather uh, you know uh, be ready with their answers so that, to my mind, uh, is really, really uh, an important facet. That does not mean you have to be a, a guru at mathematics or binomials and uh, you know trigonometry and that stuff because that's not what business maths is all about. Uh, but yes, if you think you've got a knack for numbers and uh, some of the other skills which I touched upon, this is some. This is definitely. Uh, area or a profession which you should uh, give a shot and which has got uh, very very uh, what should i say uh, excellent uh, opportunities awaiting um, and even in these times when a lot of jobs are on the line uh, um, and a lot of jobs are going to automation as long as you can differentiate yourself and concentrate on not doing the mechanical work but you know carrying that technical acumen which you acquire as you either pursue a chartered accountant's degree or an ACCA course. Uh, and trust me, economics, I, I, I still love the subject. I will go back to it one day. I have made that promise myself. Is probably one of the best groomings one could have because then you don't get caught in only a debit or a credit. You look the balance sheet or you look the business from a very different perspective. All the macroeconomics, all the microeconomics that you study, you bring to the fore. So while my my peers used to go and ask clients questions around this debit and credit entries not making sense. My questions were more around, uh, okay, so if you're, you sold so many cars and as per your bill of materials, uh, so much iron should have been used uh, and I know your scrap percentage. Uh, so, so much should have been left in inventory, I can't see it. And honestly, coming from an analyst or a uh, you know junior associate, but there was a lot of uh, one pushback I got, but I got a lot of backing from my partners 
um, and 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 managers, early managers, who said, "But the question is right, and that's what these managements are supposed to answer." So, if some of you are privy to some of the scams which have happened recently, whether that was the manpasan beverages or whether that was, um, uh, uh, I, okay, let me not go down there controversial, but there are a lot of scams which are happening. But if you ask the right questions at the right time. and trust me most time on an auditing engagement is spent by the junior associates who go on to the field and do the field work uh, the managers and others are actually managing the overall thing but obviously managers have to ask their junior associates the relevant questions as well but very very exciting i'm telling you you get to go to factories uh, which which you've never imagined so i have been to uh, the best of the factories the most sophisticated ones and i have been to the worst of the factories i've been at the command center in the control center for somebody like an airtel uh, you know where uh, they at any given point of time are watching a data set which could be in billions and there are like uh, you know if you've seen some stock exchanges so i was very recently at the new york stock exchange when you go to the stock exchange you have a 360 degree view there are probably 500 screens flashing different things all the time so it's something similar at a, a airtel or a vodafone or a jio where they have to ensure that their command center is up at all points of time the network is not down uh uh and and um uh, yeah i'll answer your question ishwarya uh, so so uh, very very amazing so i have been on to a uh, ship to uh, inspect the vessel i have been on to the ongc's oil platform which is uh, deep uh, sea uh you get to do amazing work you get to learn uh, real time first hand uh, uh interact straight away with the who's who uh, and the cfos and you have the ability if you have your data and if you've done your homework to question them and then hold your moral responsibility to the investors many a time there are these dilemmas let's say if reliance is owned by ambani's should the auditor of the company be answerable to ambani's or should the auditor of the company take care of the interest of all the other minority shareholders and investors who invested in them and that's a very very important line to know and thus one has always said that my job is to have the best set of accounting and the rightest set of accounting numbers put out in the uh, stock exchange and in the media which i'm happy and comfortable signing if i'm not comfortable i will not sign you've seen so many auditor resignations also of late because the management and the auditors don't agree on things yeah so uh, it's a, it's a it's a great profession to sort of embark upon and one of the side channels which is sort of developed over the years is as auditors questions became inquisitive and more data driven more analytical the companies also had to then come up with even more sharpened responses so i must share with you that for the last 20 years i haven't done an audit for the first 3 years 3 and a half years i did audits and then i moved to an area where i tend to call myself as a cfo or a controller's best friend because they also need a lot of ammunition because most of the times they're doing the right things but they're not sure where exactly in the literature is it written that what they're doing is right so i have over the years specialized this art of not letting any auditors or regulators whether it is the sec whether it is the roc whether it is the institute of chartered accountants of india or our own sebi to come and trouble the uh, companies okay if the company is done something which is right acceptable signed off by the auditor one should be able to defend it and that's an area which increasingly i have been playing a role in so i call, we call it financial advisory services so i do anything and everything which an auditor doesn't do so if an auditor cannot come and do accounting because he has to audit you he has to check you i go down and tell the companies what their right accounting is and last night at 12 i received a very urgent call from us and there is a company which has been acquired there and they say this company has been recognizing revenue on day one the moment they ship just like a maruti example although this company is in software field this com- this company has been recognizing revenue the moment they cut a bill and they are in software and i am not comfortable and i would want to recognize it you know on a uh, straight line basis or when till my contract last etc now there are there are positives and negatives to both of it and one can analyze what is the right so but he needs an answer within 24 hours so my team is working even as i am interacting with you and we will turn around a, a draft answer to them in the 24 so that's how critical it becomes because uh, if if the company continues to recognize revenue on day 1 then they don't have 
visibility on or stability of revenues for the next few years and we all know that we that we get that we get uh, that we get uh, what should i say the the investment multiple so if facebook is ready to pay me uh, 2 billion dollars today for a 9% stake you know the platform that it is investing it in is is in losses today so it is not paying me for the current losses it is paying me for the future potential so all of this becomes very very exciting very very relevant you are actually working on real time helping clients make their investment decisions helping prepare their books of accounts helping corporate so if i could give you a statistics today i think global fortune 500 companies at least 80% of the companies have outsourced work to india and of the outsourced work 80% of that work is done in india for example hsbc their annual report is the size of an erstwhile telecom directory which we used to have sonia just give me one second sure, okay sure. and that that telecom directory which is like 3 and a half inches thick 80% of that is prepared out of india okay so there are a lot of career opportunities here a lot of exciting work here chartered accountancy is one degree which you could pursue to actually land and then go uh, much further if if that is what interests you but there are other streams also even within these big fours all right so even accounting now for insurance companies and banks requires a lot of actuarial insights which will come economics is one of the subjects which people pursue and statistics and data analytics along with it is what makes it very very relevant all right and um, uh Yeah, sorry i'm just a bit conscious of time and uh, i know I've, i you guys have been patient listeners for the longest time i'm happy to sort of open this up and now make it a lot more conversational there are aspects navni which i may not have uh, covered and because we started 15 minutes late hope we'll go 15 minutes beyond 11 happy to spend time and please feel free to be the devil's advocate and ask all the questions where you believe i must have missed out on some attributes which we should have covered in this talk yeah Uh, we um, have to unfortunately do a hard stop um, at eleven because the next speaker starts at eleven. So we can surely switch to a Q and A session now if that's okay with you. And no, you're perfectly okay with me. Yeah. So um, let's see. I'll I'll begin by telling you the questions that came in earlier. Um, Ishwari was asking, is there any threat regarding the scope? in the auditing sector in the near future so very good point one this profession um, ashwarya is not going to die down uh, you know nobody with so you will not invest a rupee with oyo or softbank or anybody till you know that what numbers they are giving you are correct right and that's where auditors would always have a say accountants will always have a say as independent professionals and so yes we run a risk for example if we are also taken for a ride and we end up signing on wrong numbers then we run that risk and that's why one has to be very proficient at what one does uh, cover oneself legally as well and at the same time i can't shy away from doing whatever requisite requirement i mean even a doctor who operates on a patient could be taken to court for something which goes wrong but as long as you've done it right and not with a mal intent you're always covered so exciting profession i would not Ten ask. Uh, uh, I would not um, uh, suggest that you get carried away by the risk aspect. There are risks in everything. The other question I saw from Yadu. Yadu, irrespective of what company you are, whether you are a bank, whether you are a insurance company, whether you are a car company, whether you are a hospital, whether you are a, a NGO, you all need auditors. You all need auditors. Yes. yeah regarding income tax returns uh, chartered accountants so how do you compute your income once you determined your accounting profit the tax tax authorities say look accounting profit is just book jugglery okay there are certain expenses i am not going to allow you okay uh, there are certain depreciation you bought a car and you want to write off the car in one year i will not allow you okay so uh, the 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 tax teams tax authorities have uh tax authorities have uh, certain rules which you have to follow when you compute your income tax i mean check with your parents also they'll also tell you that uh, even if like some are in business or some are in service uh, even when i have to offer my income to tax as salary income or as business gains income as a partner with the firm i there are certain adjustments which i need to do so the chartered accountants are again the best people to do that for you and 
they are they are uh, they have the requisite knowledge and they sign off and help you do that so for gst and income tax uh, frankly ashwarya it is the chartered accountants course only there are certain certifications available but frankly um, with gst coming in uh, while there is so much uh, backlash and people are saying it's not a simple tax frankly it's much simpler i mean you guys are so lucky you haven't seen when i started my career there were 17 odd taxes which i used to check for a single transaction which the entity used to do so while there is a lot of political uh, to and fro which is happening around this but uh, G, uh, but gst is very simply fight now it's good and simple tax for sure and in the years to come it will become even more simpler the problem with that is that then it renders itself to a lot of automation so unless you are a top notch um, you know uh, a professional who understands gst in and out and wants to fight cases in legal terms the opportunities around gst accounting etc would tend to dry up a little is my sense don't quote me on this but that's my independent thought on this yeah but to complete my question on yadu you need an auditor for everybody even the government has an auditor there's some something somebody known as Com comptroller and auditor general cag so if you know when modi sarkar came in they came in on this plank saying that cag has found 2 lakhs worth uh, crores 2 lakh crores worth of scam in how the coal allocation had happened and telecom spectrum had happened and all those scams were unearthed by the auditor called comptroller and auditor general who audits the government spend all right so, any other question can i ask my question yes vasu so sir if i want to get into finance investment banking uh, ultimately so what should yeah. be my uh, most lucrative road bank like for my undergrad should i pursue a certification or should i go for finance and accounting courses or should i directly um, go for acca or and then pursue something else so what should no, be so if you want to account? fair enough fair enough i'm just conscious of time so i'll try and quickly answer so uh unless navni and sonia obliges by telling the next speaker also that there's a technical glitch and we'll take it 10 minutes more which i'm not sure to do having said that um look if you want to go into investment banking okay on the investment side and 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 on the finance side then you don't have to be a chartered accountant though i still continue to believe and some of the best compliments which i get from the clients i interact with interact with and i don't have a linkedin profile so they can't find out before i meet them who i am so is that they believe that i'm from probably one of the best uh, you know uh, management uh, institute so whether that's an iim or a global one they don't think i'm a chartered accountant okay but i believe a chartered accountant uh, plus an mba degree is the most lethal combination you can have to become one of the best investment gurus or investment managers etc having said that if you are clear that auditing accounting etc is not your forte you don't get there you more for this investment banking and a slightly more glamorous job role okay then uh, mba is the best and yes as you prepare for that mba in finance okay and now there are courses in investment banking also you should pick up some of these um uh, certifications along your journey as an undergrad around finance and accounts and then move down that path is but what sir, i would say like uh, given that you have been in the industry what's the demand for under, after under graduation if i want to pursue a job so what would be the best option as in do they hire do the big companies hire cas and uh, accountants so or very, do they hire very good very good point so so undergrads typically land up with most of these captives vasu okay, okay. Uh, whether that's a accenture whether that's a uh tcs infosys wipro genpak wns yeah and the likes so uh undergrads typically line up there or if they want to pursue a chartered accountancy they pick up an article ship with one of the big four firms okay mm. and then some of you get lucky and pick up some summer, summer internships or are top of your class then you get taken as management trainees okay get recruited as management trainees you work for a year or two okay i mean uh, the likes of itc hul and some of these others but those numbers are very few okay so the the, the race is really uh, the fight is fight for those one seat is like one to a hundred or even more okay yeah and then you work for two years and then go on and pursue an mba degree okay those are the typical slots which are available okay or if and you want to get into, let's say trading you want to become the next harshad mehta or ketan parekh or i mean the names are wrong but uh, obviously yeah, yeah. you want or let's say Uh, junjun wala okay then i mean frankly you just need the knack for numbers i mean if you've done a good account good undergrad degree and then you start joining a brokerage firm for two years as an, as an smc or a um, blackrock or some of these others okay a dsp and others and work with them 
they also take undergrads and then they get to certifications around uh, investment uh, and and there are some nse uh, certifications which are available investment certification trading certifications which are available you can probably pick up that so the brokerage firms take undergrad from finance itself right like they do they do yeah, yeah and, they do and which one would you prefer ca or acca so personally because i am a chartered accountant i like to believe ca is the best degree in the world i have taken cpas to cleaners i have taken acca to cleaners over a long period of time and uh, i like to be very transparent uh, so so indian chartered accountant scores has probably yaar hum log na sorry we are with indians have this knack for money okay we are the yeah. savers we were like worldwide we were the best savers and best with the money genuinely when the global financial crisis happened in 2008 the only country which probably escaped it unscathed was india and the rbi governor of that time y v reddy was hailed globally as one of the visionaries who didn't succumb to the uh, you know fancies of uh, the subprime lending and some of the other stuff which was happening and deepak parekh and others went on record to say in hindsight we want to thank mr reddy for saving us because we used to go to his throat every second day saying boss allow us allow us allow us every country is doing it why don't you allow us allow us allow us blah blah anyways having said that genuinely the indian chartered accountant course is very very comprehensive and the the testing standards are very high so uh, the pass percentage when i passed was 4 out of 100 people used to become a chartered accountant okay and it's one institute which gives you a degree, that degree however what i will grant acca is that acca has come up with a 14 subject paper its curriculum is such that they will also train you into multiple subjects Uh, it's industry relevant as well and then they insist that you work for 2 years okay hmm. and then you get your degree before you actually get your degree okay so relatively speaking acca is a simpler and a relatively speaking easier exam to crack okay and uh, they are a little flexible also in terms of exam centers on where all they allow their exams to happen and uh, the 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 level at which they test etc and i think the pass percentages are also higher and because it is a uk body uh, so there are three bodies in uk this is one of them which certify the contents so this body then has then claims that they are accepted in 150 odd countries okay as an acca degree so that's their uh, usp and i think they are coming up very very fast in fact they are launching in india also i think with some universities also they are launching uh, their courses and then you can take exams uh, sitting anywhere earlier there were certain few centers identified etc so i i think uh, uh, there are career prospects now open with both and frankly if you ask me honestly whether it's an mba degree you get from iim ahmedabad or you get it from iimt ghaziabad whether it's a chartered accountants degree or whatever beyond a point the degree or the uh, the institution that you come from beyond opening the first few doors for you which are relatively easier for you to get opened it is your in your own performance your own impetus your own caliber which carries you in the world wherever you went that i mean it having spent 25 years and seen people from all walks of life i can tell you that that's a fact sorry uh, sonia thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much um i it's, it's been a very interesting session and i obviously you have a wealth of experience to share uh with the students but there's there's unfortunately only so much time sir but thank you so much for your session i know you were having a lot of technical glitches in the beginning um but i think everything kind of smoothed out uh in the end um just sure. very, just very briefly sir we would uh, on behalf of isbf we um we have a small token of appreciation that we would like to uh to uh, give you um i think everybody is very uh, very environmentally conscious at the moment and and we thought we could do our bit uh, for the environment by donating trees on your behalf by an organization called uh, sun uh, sunlap taru sankalp taru yeah yeah yes so we have donated trees on your behalf and you will shortly get a certificate uh, to find out where your trees have been planted and you can and follow the journey no absolutely uh, this is so uh, such a nice gesture thank you genuinely uh, uh, i'm i'm sorry for starting late because of technical glitches but uh, always love interacting with students and um, uh, if it gives you some comfort i planted a tree myself when i was 7 it's a mango tree in my house and these days i i can't take my laptop out and i would have shown it to you but yeah we are now eating all those mangoes after all those years wow. so very environmentally conscious 
I couldn't have gotten a better. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for for Pleasure. all your time. Take care. Pleasure. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you.